Moving next to the Big Ten Championship game, the Penn State Nittany Lions, a third-ranked team in the country, will take on the number one-ranked Oregon Ducks. This is the fourth meeting ever between these two programs and the first since the 1995 Rose Bowl. Now, the last time the Nittany Lions defeated a team that was 10-0 or better in the matchup was 1987 Fiesta Bowl. That was the game against Miami. When Miami entered the game against Penn State 11-0, and they lost 14-10. We all know the record for James Franklin, but I have to reiterate it. I'm not driving it home, but I, it's part of the narrative. It's part of the information, and you need to know what it is. He's 1-16 all-time against AP Top 5 teams. All right? Cool. It's over. And it doesn't matter. This is a new game. This is a new opportunity. Question number one. Can Penn State find some explosiveness in the run game? Now, we know they have really talented backs. Nicholas Singleton, Katrin Allen are both really solid. We've known that for now for a very long time. But here's the problem, is that neither one have really gotten loose for some big gains this year. Katrin Allen, his long run this season is 26 yards, and he has about four and a half yards per carry is what he's averaging. Now, down the stretch, in his last 26 carries, Katrin Allen's only had 64 yards gained. So it hasn't really been as good down the stretch. Singleton, on the other hand, he does not have a carry that has gone for over 18 yards since week two against Bowling Green. So that's something that needs to happen as well. So they need to find some explosiveness in the run game because that is going to require chunk yardage. And we know that, at least at this point, I know that Penn State has struggled against top competition, creating chunk yardage to the air. So hopefully they can find it on the ground because if they can, that would put a little more pressure on the Oregon Ducks. Question number two, will Penn State be able to protect? Now, Penn State had a lot of challenges against Ohio State. Now, we know that Ohio State's defensive line is, is really good, probably the best defensive line that Penn State's seen all season. And as a result, that defensive front, they did a really good job of applying pressure and neutralizing the line of scrimmage when playing against the Nittany Lions. Now, Penn State, they also gave up some Wisconsin, some pressure to Wisconsin. They gave up some pressure to West Virginia. It's also worth noting, man, I mean, just across the board, the protection has not been super elite all season for Penn State. Now, Oregon, they have what I think many would consider to be an elite defensive front. Now, I think they're excellent. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say they're elite, but I think they're excellent. I do think their two defensive tackles have a chance to be elite. Uh, Derek Harmon, Jamari Caldwell, like those guys are outstanding. Like really, really good. Now, are they on the same level as an Aaron Donald or a, or a Nick Bosa or something like that? No, not to that extreme, but they can take over the game if necessary. Question number three, will Dylan Gabriel be the difference again? Now, Dylan Gabriel in the biggest game of the season against Ohio State, he was 23 of 34, 341 and two touchdowns. He also did a pretty good job of, of kind of keeping things alive with his legs. He added a rushing touchdown in that game as well. Um, it was his best performance in an Oregon Duck uniform. Now, one area of note, Oregon's been pretty patient at times in the passing game. They're going to get the ball out of Dylan Gabriel's hands quickly. They average just six and a half air yards per target, so they're not pushing it downfield with crazy regularity. That's one of the lowest in the country. However, they're the seventh most yards at the catch. They have really good weapons that can catch and run, but Dylan Gabriel against Ohio State, he was taking shot after shot after shot, or at least it felt that way compared to watching their offense most of the year. So will they ramp up the aggressiveness like they did the last time around? Question number four, who will win the best matchup of the game? Because to me, the best matchup in the game is Penn State's defensive ends against Oregon's offensive tackles. Now, the D-line and the pass rush, more specifically for Penn State, I think that's the best thing they do. So this is a strength against strength. You know, And whoever wins this one might go a long way and being able to create big problems for the opposing team. So watch, Abdul Carter, Denai Dennis Sutton, others that will rotate in there sporadically. They're going to be the defensive ends working against Josh Connerly and Johnny Cornelius. 
So this should be a really fun one to watch. I know scouts will be salivating over this matchup and watching those guys work against each other. Question number five. Do you trust Drew Aller when he's targeting anyone other than Tyler Warren? Now, we know how good Tyler Warren is, right? Top five in receptions, yards, receiving touchdowns. Already set a single season record for receptions and yards amongst tight ends. Now, he's accounted for 33% of Penn State's receiving yards. He's got 81 catches for 978 yards. Now, the best option outside of Tyler Warren is Trey Wallace, who missed last week's game. Now, I expect him he's going to be ready to go. But if for whatever reason there's a setback between now and game time, that could be catastrophic. And then the biggest game of the year for Drew Aller, he was just 12 of 20 for 146 and threw an interception against the Buckeyes. Now, his legs were beneficial to Penn State's offense, but he has yet to show us how he can take over the game against top-level competition. And this game will require his best. If he gives it to us, then they have a real chance of pulling off the upset. Let's go to the trends in the game. Penn State, 0-4 against the spread against teams with a winning record this year. Think about that for a second. 0-4 against the spread against teams with a winning record. They only played four teams with a winning record. That was my first reaction. And they're 0-4 in those games? Surprised by that. Oregon is 7-3 against the spread against top 10 teams since 2018. And then a couple friends in the desert. I found this to be uh, a little bit interesting. Uh, they are increasing the line by one and a half points in this game. Or the, quote, home field is favoring Penn State in this game by about one and a half points. It's a neutral site, but Penn State's getting a one and a half point boost because it's about 1,750 miles closer to State College than it is to Eugene, <laughs> which I don't know how that makes sense. But whatever, neutral site still favors Penn State, I suppose. Doesn't matter. Give me Oregon. Give me the over. I think it's going to be a high-scoring affair. I think Oregon will get their points. I think Penn State might be able to move the ball against Oregon as well.